This is the Tata Punch. It is the company's second best selling car after the Tata Nexon and quite rightly so. The Punch has caught the fancy of buyers thanks to its SUV aspirations, its butch looks, its high ground clearance, its raised driving position and the fact that it's priced at par with premium hatchbacks. And now the extra is here to grab a share of the subcompact SUV segment buy. Which of these two deserve your money? Let's find out. Both these cars are quite similar in dimension but the Exter is shorter in length and height of course minus the roof rails and it's a bit narrower too. The Exter gets the longer wheelbase compared to the Punch. Of course these are only a few millimeters here and there. What you get with the Exter are some interesting design elements such as the H pattern LED lamps and the multi-dimensional panels in the grille on the sides and at the back. On the sides you have these distinct cuts and creases at the front and the back and you have these squared out wheel arches with the thick body cladding. One thing that I can't wrap my head around is the fact that the body cladding towards the rear looks a bit incomplete and the fact that the 3 4 profile of the car looks a bit too bulky dwarfing the 15 inch alloys. And in this company the Tata Punch looks quite handsome, quite well proportioned and with its mini Harrier looks it is definitely an attractive looking vehicle. It also has these unique Y-shaped tri-arrow patterns scattered all across the car. Now, which of these two cars do you like? Let us know in the comments. The Exter's cabin feels like a really nice place to be in. And even though there are hard plastics all around, the fit finish and the quality of bits is really good. In fact, in terms of finesse, it is the Exter's cabin that has an edge over the Tata Punches. What's also nice is that the front seats are really nice and comfortable. You are seated in a good, although a bit raised driving position, but this one feels more like a tall hatchback than an SUV from behind the wheel. For those with larger body frames, they'll find the front seats a bit lacking in terms of support and bolstering. And the fixed headrest will be short for tall passengers and won't provide adequate whiplash protection in the event of an accident. Other than that, the ergonomics are spot on, visibility all around is great thanks to the glass area and in general, it's a nice place to be. That said, it isn't perfect. The all black cabin doesn't feel as welcoming or as bright as the Tata Punch but what does brighten the ambience is the presence of a sunroof. Hyundai's 8-inch touchscreen is slicker and nicer to use and it even gets physical shortcut buttons making it that much easier to operate on the move. As you saw, the Exta isn't a car you walk into, it's a car you sit inside. And what I mean is, the seating is a bit low compared to SUV standards. But once you're in, you like the seat for its comfort. The backrest is nicely angled. You have ample space on offer and you can even tuck your feet beneath the front seats and get really comfortable. What's also nice is that you have air vents and a charging socket, but what's missing is a rear armrest. Compared to the Exter, the interiors of the Tata Punch feel a bit more vibrant, a bit more stylish. Thanks to this contrasting white panel, you have these colored highlights around the air vents. And in general, it looks a lot more appealing and feels upmarket thanks to the textured bits all around. Now the seats in this one are broader than the Exter, so even those with larger frames will be comfortable. But the cushioning is a bit firm for my taste. What I like though is that you're seated a bit higher in the punch than in the extra so you can see the edges of the bonnet quite easily. And then there's the touchscreen. Now compared to the extra and in general it feels a bit small and a bit dated but what I like is that the sound quality from the six speaker Harman system it's actually really very good. And from the front seat we move on to the back seat and as you can see I'm seated quite high, much higher than in the Exter 
and in a very chair like position with the backrest which is slightly upright but i don't mind that at all i have decent enough headroom there's decent enough knee room the windows are nice and large so in general this feels like a much brighter and airier place compared to the exter what you also get in the tata punch is a rear armrest which is missing in the exter but unlike the exter you don't get rear ac vents talking boot space it is the exter that has a deeper more accommodating boot compared to the punch and even its equipment list is longer featuring modern niceties like wireless charging projector headlamps and a segment first dash camera a point to note is that after we filmed this review tata updated the punch with some new features which include a sunroof the 1.2 liter four cylinder kappa 2 petrol engine is known for its refinement and i'm happy to report that in the exta it remains just as smooth as you'd expect it to be performance is brisk power delivery is quite linear and this engine is the freer revving engine of the two in comparison the engine is very smooth and it pulls cleanly now like the punch the exter uses a 5 speed amt but uniquely hyundai uses electrical actuators instead of the commonly used hydraulic actuators to put it simply without getting too technical electrical actuators facilitate gear changes relatively quicker than hydraulic actuators and even dampen the shock between gear shifts so what that means is the shifts are much smoother compared to amt standards the pause between shifts is much lesser and this really smoothens out the transition between gears in fact as far as amt is go this is one of the better transmissions out there and the best part is the exter gets paddle shifters yes that's right the exter gets paddle shifters and well due to the electrical actuators it responds really well to inputs of course the gear shifts are not lightning quick when you're using the paddles it's not like a dsg or not even like a torque converter but it certainly does well to add that requisite dose of engagement and give you some manual control right when you need it in fact i've been using the paddle shifters a lot more especially on the highway and when i want to overtake just downshift and you're ready to go of course once you're in manual mode and if you forget to upshift or downshift the transmission will automatically do it for you so this is a smooth powertrain but what about other aspects honestly the suspension setup in this car is very very impressive it is softly sprung but it takes on bad roads broken patches and even sharp edges really well in fact i'll go a step further and say this suspension tune is better than the tata punch but here's the thing while the exter's low speed ride is nicer at higher speeds it tends to pitch and bob a bit due to its soft suspension and that's where the punch's stiffer setup gives the tata an edge on the matter of safety has it been crash tested no it hasn't so we'll have to wait for that to happen to pass a comment but in terms of safety the exter gets you six airbags right across the range and esp is optional right from the base variant now that we know how the exter drives let's see how the punch amt drives now right off the bat tata's three cylinder engine does sound a bit crainy and you can feel some vibrations filtering through at idle with bs6 phase 2 which was introduced earlier this year Tata has certainly improved NVH levels however refinement is still not this car's strong suit Of course once you get moving that gravelly engine note at idle it smoothens out quite nicely and the vibrations are ironed out really nicely So on the move 
Yes, it is a bit louder than the Exter. However, it is not something you'd complain about. What really surprised me is this engine's low-end grunt. Now, this is the more powerful engine. It makes around 88 horsepower and it makes around 115 newton meters of torque. But what's really nice is that it makes its max torque a bit earlier than the Exter. So, this one does feel a bit peppier. It feels a bit more responsive. And in general, it feels like it has the stronger punch. Power throttle responses feel relatively sharper and while performance feels stronger, when we strapped on our GPS-based testing gear, it was the Exter's freer revving engine that resulted in better acceleration times. This engine gets city and eco mode, but on the highway you'd yearn for a sport mode, for stronger responses and a bit more zing. This automated manual transmission is tuned towards efficiency, so it has a tendency to upshift at the earliest instance, and even downshifts are quite conservative. It doesn't downshift as generously as the Extra, so often you'd want the car to go down from fifth to third to make a quick overtake, but it'll probably just do a fifth to a fourth gear downshift, and that's where you'd miss that zing while out on the highway or while overtaking. And the pause between shifts is definitely more pronounced in the punch than the Exter. And that shift shock or that head nod that you get between gear shifts, it is more prominent in the Tata punch. Now while the brake bite was very easy to judge in the Exter, in the punch it is a bit too sharp, so it does take some getting used to. In our road test we had all but praises for the way Tata has nailed the punch's right and handling balance. I mean, this car exudes an underlying sense of toughness and it tackles bad and broken roads with a sense of authority and a sense of maturity. But after experiencing the Exter in similar conditions on similar terrain, I can confirm that in comparison, the punch feels a bit stiffer and the Exter, surprise, surprise, does a better job at absorbing bad roads and broken roads. As mentioned earlier, the punch feels more stable on the highway and in line with its SUV credentials, the punch also packs a trick up its sleeve. Now to make it more bad road and broken road friendly, the Tata Punch is equipped with Traction Pro. Now this system detects when one of the front wheels are just spinning away and wasting the power, it will automatically apply the brake to that wheel and let the other wheel with traction pull you out of sticky situations. Before giving you the verdict, let's take a look at their pricing. The base variant of the Tata Punch is more affordable, but the Exter gets you more kit to begin with. At the top end, both cars are similarly priced, but again, it is the Exter which packs in some extra modern niceties. The verdict is quite clear. The punch feels like a more stable car on the highway. So if your usage involves a lot of highway driving, the punch is a better option. Its relatively higher seating also makes it a bit easier to get in and out. So for the elderly, the punch is the better choice. But in every other way, the Hyundai Exter is better than the Tata Punch. Its engine is stronger, gearbox is smoother, Space is marginally better and typical to a Hyundai, it is extremely well equipped. And for all these reasons, it is the Hyundai Exter which wins this comparison test. <laughs>